What's up, Connection? Welcome back to Ryan JT's Excellent Wrestling Adventure. I'm JT, that's Ryan. We're at you every other week or so, live watching wrestling with our friends. We take a look at hour-long wrestling television programs on this journey. So you're not going to see the old culprits that you may see on others because we're keeping it under an hour on these shows. And uh, we're doing a season gimmick, Ryan. Every every season, we're going to do something different. And season one here, we're doing premieres of famous wrestling programs. That we are. We are seven episodes deep now, and mm-hmm. we are uh, diving into some confidential here by the request yeah. of our guest here. It is. And uh, real quick before that, I just want to thank anyone who's watching on YouTube. This podcast is simulcast, uh, both video and audio, so you can watch it on YouTube. Subscribe if you're here, and then you'll get all the notifications. We're also available on all podcast apps under North-South Connection, so if you prefer to listen, you can do that. Uh, most of our podcasts here on North-South Connection are simulcast, both video and audio. Some are audio only, some are video exclusive, so just subscribe to both. Visit NorthSouthConnection.com, follow us on social media, do one of those things, and you can... Um, be kept up to speed on all of our cool shows that we're delivering and feel free to leave some comments and share around the love as well we appreciate that uh all right ryan you mentioned our guest chose this and that is of course you can see on screen mr james grunberg jimmy how are you i'm doing well uh great to be here and uh to be part of the uh, premiere episodes you know i got this idea from uh when you guys did the velocity premiere i was like oh you know what i'll just do um i'll ask uh for the uh, confidential uh premiere here and that was the same night, right? May 25th, 02. So we talked yeah, about yeah. it a bit on Velocity that these aired back to back, debuting oh, on TNN. Wow. Cool. The new Saturday night. Yes. Yeah, I and- know. Um, I feel like by this point, you know, I watched, I would like watch Velocity. It was like, it felt like, you know, like the Friday night lineup almost. It's like, but I got to go to, I can, I got to watch the confidential. You know, I can't go to bed until after confidential. It's like, dude, that's on midnight. And I would usually like fall asleep, you know, during like confidential and just like shut the TV off myself, you know? So I probably wouldn't make a confidential episode, but then I'd be like, yeah, I'm tired. I don't want to watch anymore. These were big, like early DVRs for me. Like, DVR was fairly new in 02. Um, I think until like 03, I, I got my first DVR like on my computer. So I, these were like big record and watch like during the week or whatever type stuff. But convention was a cool concept when it came out. Um, it was definitely pretty anticipated. I think a big part of that is that they got Mean Gene back to host it. Like I think that was a really big selling point for it. Um, Gene had, I mean, obviously WCW. Uh, was only about a year dead at this point. Gene and Bobby Heenan were at WrestleMania 17. So Gene was kind of in the atmosphere of WWE. Um, I think he had done some DVD stuff as well. That was, uh, or I don't know, were you in DVDs? I guess they were starting to come out, right? Yeah, um, so he's doing some of that stuff. And I think this was like the perfect forum for him to use him. Like I think this was a great choice to have him host and do this app. Being the hotline guy, this is almost like the next evolution of the hotline. Um, you know, they don't go full 10 out of 10 shoot interview style, which is also very big at this time. All of Rob, uh, Rob Feinstein and all that crap are video. Like those shoots were super hot during 99, 2000, 102. So this was like a big deal uh, to do this kind of show. But now they could control the narrative. Dodie could. So this was a, a pretty big deal for them to be able to kind of p- p- pull the curtain back on some stuff. And there are some pretty controversial episodes. We can talk about them as we go. But um, why don't we go to dive in? This is available on YouTube. It's also available on Peacock. We're watching the YouTube version. If you're joining us on YouTube, you look to the sky, you might uh, find a little something for yourself as well. And we're going to go ahead and fire this up. Again, we're watching on YouTube. Uh, and you can find it there. It's the version without commercials if you're trying to sync up with us. So let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to start in three, two, one. One play. There it was like a little eyeball. Yeah, I always like the theme song. Mm-hmm. Oh, there we see tonight's episode. Uh... They were invested in the show. Like we looked at it, right? It goes a good two years. Um, yeah. And they even do a DVD release, like the best of Confidential, like you know, not that long after this. So they were definitely into this as a series. Um, yeah, it runs from May 25th, 02 to April 24th, 04. 83 episodes. Wow. That's a yeah. good run. 80. So they're pretty evergreen, too. You can kind of go back and replay these and get mm-hmm. probably some mileage out of them, too. There's some, uh, there's our good old boy, Mean Gene. Great, great choice. So, I mean, so here are some of the topics they cover, like out of the gate, right? So they this one, which we're going to get into, this is the interview with Sean. 
Um, they do an analysis of why Austin leaves the company. That's right after this, pretty much in June. Uh, they do um, the uh, report of the death of Miss Elizabeth, which is a big deal. Obviously, that's the one that really ruffled some feathers because they play the 911 calls. They do uh, an episode when Matt Capitelli gets beat up by a hardcore Holly. Um, they do it explicitly on that. They do one on Bulldog as well, I think, when he passes away. Yeah. So they definitely dive into some interesting topics. They do a lot of at-home stuff, like crib style as well. They did a lot of the obituaries. Yes. Like you said, uh, they didn't like, – like, basically, like, a lot of them who, like, passed away. It was, like – because 2003 had a lot of, like – 2002 mm-hmm. and 03 had, like, a lot of, like, deaths um, – you know, you had like you had Miss Elizabeth, you had Bulldog, a really great uh, classy, uh, classy Freddie Blassy episode. The one that got the most, um, like you said, the nine one one call, Miss Elizabeth. But yeah. I think the one that really got the show kicked off here, besides this one, is that Stone Cold Steve Austin yeah. one because that was just like the hottest thing. It was even like a setup episode. It was, hey, this just happened. Let's do something about it. You know, and that that actually got the UPN. Uh, nine news um like two it's like uh breaking news you know stone cold steve austin just got like just walked away from wrestling and it made like headline news on upn as well yeah because that was on a monday and i think that confidential aired that week i'm pretty sure about all like they went right to it and because they were trying to spin it right to prevent his side from coming out so this was probably a precursor to the wwe.com show bite this is that what is was that what kind of replaced this for that lore? I feel like Bite This started while this was on still. Like Bite This was around for a yeah. while. Um because yeah, Kevin Bite was on is... Bite This and he's gone by O three. Yeah, okay. I I heard over, uh, the the uh, Matt Hardy Edge and Lita thing was a big bite yeah. this thing. Uh, that would have been like a confidential thing too. All right, if that... I think I mean, if this is accurate, you're gonna be pretty surprised when Bite This started. Um it looks like it started in '97. What? How is that possible? Was Livewire, but Livewire was still a thing, though. It couldn't have been '97. This can't be right. This is IMDb. I want to say it's like 2000. Not EV Club says '97. Wow, uh, here's a good the webcast here. show in which the rest of the Federation interview each other and briefly summarize what happened the week before. I don't know IMD. IMDb stuck on '97, but I can't. Imagine that's accurate because there was no what web. Was well, they had AOL, I guess. No, this says that? first aired July fourth, ninety seven. That sounds wild. Well, I just don't buy it, but I mean, what does it say? It ends. Oh six. Grisham. Oh six. Okay. Yeah. It probably like killed it. Has some memorable moments as well. Yeah. Well, the, if anyone knows for sure. I mean, I guess it could have been on AOL. I mean, they had their AOL site up and running in 97. Yeah. Was that where Sean would do the typing? and? <laughs> well, he looks like he couldn't figure out a uh, yeah, computer, basically. Yeah, WrestleMania. That's what he was on at WrestleMania 13 was by, by this. Uh, All right, here's an article from Kevin Kelly. <laughs> um, and he wrote this in, in 2011 about Bite This. Wow. Uh, biggest thing we did was Brad Gaffs. Bite This... The producer Bite This invented the format. Raw Magazine hosted that kind of dialogue every month before that, which is true. They also, Raw Magazine was kind of the first thing they did that was like an expose type. Um, Vince Russo is a big part of creative driving force behind Bite This that launched on the website. My original co host Russo is a perfect antagonist. His original radio show, blah, 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 four years later, made his debut. Yeah, they talk about Doty on AOL. Bill Banks is a big player in the early days of Bite This. I I I think ninety seven is accurate. I think I think it was like just on AOL or whatever. Oh, or yeah, I thought Bill Banks was a WCW guy by this point. Uh, yeah, he goes with Russo. Oh, okay. But I mean, if Kevin was doing it, it had to be pre o three. And the way he's talking about it in that article sounds like he was. You know, Russo, it was Russo who started it. So that's going to be before 99 if Russo's on it. Yeah. Jerry Briscoe has, like, the funniest, like, stories when it comes to the Montreal screw shop. He's like, I told them I didn't want to go to the bar. And then I went right up to Sean's room. 
and I told them how to counter the sharpshooter because <laughs> McMahon was going to ring the bell anyway, Tommy. You know, he was just going to ring that bell. And I said to Earl, I said, tell baby Earl to go get his brother. Tell him to have the car running. That is basically <laughs> how Gerald Briscoe talks. I believe it. Yeah. So when does Sean come back on TV? Is that May? Like, is and that right around old. this? May like the June. June. So yeah. they throw him on TV when Hall leaves. So Hall has the Austin stuff, and then I think he's around for another month, and then he's just too much to handle. Does the yep. JBL thing, and then I think he comes in around – HBK returns around May. To join so, yeah. Because the phone guy from Hal. Like, he had to be back when they did this, I'm guessing. That's probably why they chose this as the first topic, because they are bringing him back. But mm-hmm. this is infamous, right? Because this is where he admits he did it, right? I mean, this is – this is like the first public admission by Sean that, yes, I was in on it. I knew. Because up to this point, he always denied it. He always said, Vince yeah. did it. He didn't tell me. I had no yeah. idea. And this was like where he finally says, yeah, okay, I, I did it. I used to love these, like, when it'd be like tomorrow night. Or if they were, like, doing, like, the um, bottom of the – bottom well, label with, like, you know, mm-hmm. tickets going on sale. You know, I always watch out for the Westchester County Center in New York <laughs> or at least the Hartford Civic Center. Why you live close to Westchester County? Um, like forty-five minutes. All right, don't be giving out any information. Yeah, we don't. Oh. <laughs> I <had> enough trouble. <laughs> and any other John Evans part two? <laughs> yeah, that could be the next confidential. We could bring it back. <laughs> the story of John Evans and Jimmy Grunberg began <laughs> July fourth, nineteen. 19- <laughs> 2023. Um, you know, I'm surprised at the plane ride from hell, but I think that was too personal. Where well, you, couldn't a good one. A, you couldn't do a confidential episode, though. There were like parties involved with the airlines. Yeah, I don't think they wanted to fuck with that. No. <laughs> they, they, if you look, they try and do stuff that paints individuals badly and not yeah. the company. And I and Brock was part of that, right? Like they weren't gonna throw him under the bus. Oh, Brad Landis is Goldust. Now we're getting a Shattered Dreams production. Oh, is this like fan videos or something? Oh, okay. <laughs> I need Jim Price as Goldust. <laughs> now we go back to, well, first, let's do a fan only. Oh, boy. I think this, uh, this Booker T Goldust run was Goldust's best run. <laughs> um, 95, 96. Uh, it's, he's, he's, he's the guy that. He has best – his best stuff is small spurts. Yeah. Anything long is, like, slips. But, like, 95, 96 when he debuts is great for, like, five months. You know what I mean? Booker is, like, awesome for that stretch. And then they finally win the titles. I think they did it a couple months too late, but it's still great. <laughs> they should have done a SummerSlam. Um, yeah. But I, I think his best stuff maybe with Cody against the Shield. Small spurts. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm mean... actually low-key liked his uh, – you know, we cover covering our war by the time this is out around there. His match with RVD and No Way Out is pretty fun. Like, I actually like that match when he comes back. Yeah, I think it's the best match of that card. I think I think we're yeah. three and a quarter on that. That's not that very good of a card. I mean, you know, it, it was towards the end of his first run. But I mean, you know, that blue, like the blue meanie thing was kind of funny, but like not his best work. Ah, yeah, it was. It was it was what it was. I mean, everything was just trying to get thrown in. Memorable. Memorable enough. Yeah, I think I think he'll be back sooner than later. I think he's up in the middle of this year. Mm. Sounds like he's up and then I know that it they wanted him to close out. I know they wanted him for the Hall of Fame last year, but the uh right. TK said no. Oh so, Goldust though. No. Okay. It makes well, sense we, to come back and Gold then Dust there with Cody and everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, think about it. If he comes back for WrestleMania 40, they go Cody, Roman again, and then you know he has Goldust in his corner. Mm-hmm. They equalize it. That's a pretty big spot. Man, this no. uh, I like the format here. So we started with Sean, so they're not teasing you, but they're going to make you wait till the end to get the juicy Sean stuff, right? So it's like, no. I kind of like it. Yeah. And now you're sitting here at 1230 a.m. like, all right. Was it definitely midnight, Grooney, or was it eleven? I feel like it was ten well, or eleven. Was 11. Well, it was 10. He ended at eleven, and then yeah. Confidence came at eleven. So 
I actually stayed up. Um, so when the Austin thing happened, I stayed up uh, to the whole news segment just to hear what they had to say, like on UPN News. It's like, what the heck is the rest of this stuff? I want to hear the good stuff, you know? And it was like, they got my ratings right that night. <laughs> Oh, it's a pretty man. good good package on RVD too, like talking about the design of his t- tights and stuff. And mm-hmm. this is like, you know, it, it, this is almost like an inside edition type show for them, right? So they're gonna have some fluff pieces, gonna have their one hard hitting story. Um, yeah. but this is this was like cool stuff at the time because you didn't get a lot of these exclusives. Like, like no. bulk, like this was the stuff that was making DVDs a big deal, right? Like all these exclusive behind the scenes features, um, you know, load of bonus content. We're gonna show you how. You know, Star Wars, the graphics were made. Like, there was stuff like that was big at the time. So, this wasn't things they really did a lot in wrestling at the time. Was, oh, we're going to show you how RVD's, you know, tights get designed and what it means to them. Oh, we're going to show you Trish Shatters' home. Like, this is stuff you didn't see a ton of on TV at that point. Did MTV come out with um, showing, like, people's, like, houses? uh, I think Cribs Cribs is already on. Cribs out on them? Oh, okay. So that's Cribs rip off, and then yeah, it, and it makes and it personalizes the wrestlers. So that's that's huge. Cribs yeah. started in two thousand. Okay. Pimp my ride right after Cribs. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a group yeah, American stuff. Chopper or whatever, like all that stuff. OC Chopper, whatever it was, West Coast Chopper. Um, like oh, all wow. those shows are big at this time. You know, like custom yeah. bikes, custom cars, the homes of celebrities, like even like HGTV and that kind of stuff was just starting. Like, cause this is around when I was working in TV and I remember those shows were just becoming a thing. Like the, the home shows, home design, cooking shows are starting to really start to take off more during the science period. It was like that look behind the scenes at how things are made and built really got hot during this time period. Was that tiger one airbrush? Cause if it was, it's probably the best one uh, to date for RVD. I see like they're all I, oh, think yeah. right, I think the Tiger one is the coolest. Yeah, that, that uh, he wears that at SummerSlam, right? Mm-hmm. Invasion. Oh, at Invasion? Okay. Yeah. I'm mixing up the Hardy matches. Yep. So I remember <laughs> this, this thing with Trish. I remember they um, they really used this later to talk about I think she might talk about it too. Because she hadn't had a lot of chances to show like personality. Because, like, she did the angle with Vince. Then she kind of started training more. And I remember they, they point to this and say, oh, look, like, Trish actually is kind of funny and has, like, is personable. And, like, I don't know if it holds up if she really is. I remember them talking about this segment, though. It was like, oh, look, Trish is actually a pretty personal, has a good personality for TV. Like, she can actually talk. Because for a long time, I think folks thought she was, like, a little rough on the mic, nervous at times. They had her host that show before these. Excess, you remember that show, Grooney? I think it was like 2001. It was Coach Access, and Trish. Excess, E E X C E S. It was like a two hour <laughs> show, I think, on USA or TNN or whatever. But I don't remember that show. Yeah, yeah. was it uh, no wrestling? It was just strictly like backstage stuff. No, they were like at a table. Um, it was like a sports center type. Let's see if I can find the details on it. Did it replace uh, live? It was oh. It was 01, August 01 to May 02. It, it died, right? It's the week before this. Um, originally hosted by Jonathan Coachman and Trish Stratus. Stratus was replaced in late 01 by Terry Runnels. The program showed classic matches taken from viewer suggestions. On April 6, 02, the first hour of the show stayed under the excess name, hosted by Michael Cole and Mark Lloyd, who presented an hour of SmackDown highlighted news. The second hour was renamed Late Night Access with Coach and Raven. The show was featured Raw highlights. Lasted a month before being replaced by Velocity and Confidential. It was 2001's Observer Worst Show of the Year. <laughs> um, Observer's Worst Show of the Year? Excess. No, oh, oh, Excess. Right. But I, I remember like them showing the, the classic movie. matches. That was like kind of cool at the time. Uh, because, again, that was something that wasn't being done a lot on US TV for WWE. Like, so they would show from the vault old stuff. Which oh, is cool. Wow, that's yeah. a lot of stuff. Uh, DVDs. So Trish, is, she's like definitely hamming it up here a little bit. So I, again, I think they were trying to use this to like, you know, show she could. She was kind of down to earth and could kind of crack jokes and different stuff. Well, yeah, I'm right. Like, yeah, for sure. I'm right as she uh, goes to. Um, she has like a, the first time relationship with Jeff Hardy on the uh, Nation Invasion, obviously, like the Invasion era. We're right there. 
and it's kind of bad, but whatever. That's an early MacBook right there. Mm-hmm. Can't hide money, Justin. Wow. That's nothing like her. I mean, she's doing all right for herself. Like, this is a nice little house for uh, this time that period. Look at that Boba Fett. Well, she's got that. This is her. She's three years in of WWE. Yeah, making money. good money. And I think she did pretty well with like, um, she did like the fitness competition modeling and all that. And also, she co hosted the law, right, for a while too. So she probably made okay money on that when she was doing that before she got picked up. She's definitely a Star Wars fan. Like, underground Star Wars fan. I think she had like a uh, model of like one of those like Imperial shuttles and you can see the Boba Fett uh, head doll too. Low key. I like these staircases. It's a nice house. <laughs> it's like yeah. pretty big. I assume too she was living alone at this point. I think I don't think she uh, was married yet. Right? wrong yet. That's her husband now. Who's the <laughs> Was that Ryan? Who's her yeah. husband? Like her a husband? husband name, yeah, yeah, her husband's name was Ron. Wasn't he like uh, brought, not physically brought into an angle, but she, he was like mentioned in an angle, right? And later on, um, I think they just brought in some guy and acted like that was Trish's boyfriend that Mickey James kidnapped. Yeah, I'll say that. Yeah, I think it was a fake. Yeah. She married uh, Ron Fasico in 2006. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what she's loaded. Yeah, I tried. I put in for that for as a backstage role. I didn't get it. Maybe as her son, you could have been. What is she, a therapist too? Yeah, she's 47 now because they mentioned it in the Money in the Bank match that when she took that ladder bump that she's 47 years old. I was like, damn, Trish is 47? She was probably living with Ron and had this house. You said they were high school sweethearts and dated for 14 years before getting married. So, Oh, yeah. You know what? That boyfriend's name was Jack in 2006 was the uh, TV. Yeah, that was fake. That was fake. Don't ask me how. I I don't even know how I remember that. I was like, his name was Jack. (laughs) You get the MVP of this episode, Rooney. She's got a good fashion. Wow. Cowboy Trish. You're up on her fashion, Rooney. That's me. There you go, buddy. Imagine this is her house in 02. Imagine what her fucking house probably looks like now. It's probably ridiculous. I feel like this would be like my like crib house, you know? <laughs> like legit. This is I mean for, for 02, I think it's a really, really cool house for like this time it period is. for someone to her level. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's take let's be real. Like a high school sweetheart, Ron won the lottery, man. Let's let's, mm-hmm. let's be real. Wow. Ron's all right. <laughs> Big Ron I always, I always believe the rock rumors though, like where they were like backstage, where they were always flirt in and together, or whatever. I, I believe that because I don't know, I wanted to or whatever. When you get a couple alphas in the back, you know what I mean? It's like Damn, she's got a full bar. Ron ain't dude. gonna give a shit though. Ron's just gonna ride that out. Like, whatever. It's the fucking rock. <laughs> Have at it. We'll see you at home. Yep. <clears throat> a little long in the tooth of this uh cribs episode. It's here. a little much, yeah. Uh, I mean, she's literally going through every shot class at this point now. <clears throat> what do you? Th- what's your funniest um, uh, uh, me Gene uh, interview? Do you have one on tap? Oh, it's got to be the, uh, the she- one of the Sheiky baby ones. The or one I I love the one with um. SummerSlam. No, Patera. You ever see oh. that one? Where Patera is yeah. like can't. He's like mush mouthing the interview, and Gene is dying. He's like, "Yeah, beat me like a redheaded stepson," and, uh, and like Gene like cannot keep it together. It's worth watching if you haven't seen it in a while on YouTube. Pull it up. The best uh, one is take put that cigarette out. Rest, uh, Royal Rumble '92. That that's probably the most famous one. Fuck it, that's SummerSlam '89, yeah, um, and, and then so um, gonna, yeah. the one from like Chad and I just recently in Nitro with it. We speak English, please, to uh, Sonny Ono <laughs> when he's ranting. Um, but I'm gonna throw out a wild card, but I think it's the funniest one. It's when the NWO mocks them, mocks the four horsemen, and he's like, No, but I am like, he's just really upset. All of a sudden, Walman goes, Yeah, whatever, Gene, beat it. <laughs> <laughs> I will not stand for this. She has That's like, a, Is there a Mike Awesome doll there? It might have been. 
there might have been like a lot of like uh, maybe they got an invasion line they never sold. <laughs> and they were like, let's just give them. No, the that might have been that might have been ECW Mike Awesome figure. Uh, she okay. was like a legit fan. I mean, like I said, she hosted the law, like she was grew up as a fan. I mean, she Oh, there's she, here's that hot tub. You know, she doesn't seem like a girl that's very outgoing. She seems comfortable and wants to stay in that lane. Mm-hmm. Wholesome, she. I'm surprised they never did like an invasion line of uh, action figures. <laughs> they should have done that. Wasn't the uh, other rumor not Rock too? Wasn't it her and Lillian? That was a big one for a while. Remember that? Hold on. Well, her and Lillian Rock? Garcia. That was the rumor for Rock a while. Trish. Oh, yeah, because they were, like, good friends. Trish and Lillian was, like, the rumor for a while. Yeah. I've never, I've never heard that one. What kind of mm-hmm. dark web are you on? You got to go, go to the no. old sleaze thread. <laughs> Probably think it's in there somewhere. Oh, here we go. What's this one? I, I want to I, I buy that one, too. I, I'm going to believe that one. I'm going to say true. <clears throat> oh, no, because, like, they were, well, Bruce tells a story um, how um, Trish is getting, like, beat up um, with, like, a strap one time. And uh, Lillian tried to be like, you shouldn't do that to Trish. And one of the writers goes, just stick to your uh, oh, say, can you see it? Shut up. Oh, <laughs> that what Snickers DVD was a good one, by the way. Um, that's another forgotten classic. We always talk about the action DVD. But yeah. what um, what had all like Austin's 01 shit, which is amazing stuff. So at the time, again, this stuff wasn't easily available. So you get a DVD like that. That has the, all that classic stuff. It's really Snickers good. From I think I have that VHS actually. What? Yeah, oh, that was a good one. That, that DVD it had some really good bonuses. <laughs> you guys eat some Snickers Crunchers back in 2002? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, man. The boyhood dream has come true for Shawn Michaels. So let's talk structure here. We had the introduction of HBK, the first seg. So what's that? Uh-huh. Seven, eight minutes. And you got yeah. commercial, you got RVDs, uh, how to make his entire boom commercial. Then you got cribs forever with Trish commercial. Now we're going home here or we Back still to Sean. Going... No, we got Sean part two. No, I'm saying we're, we're going home with Sean. We got two oh, segments yeah, with yeah, Sean. Yeah. Probably we got the Steve Sean really and then we got the, uh, the last commercial, probably him confessing and then fallout. Yeah. So that's that's a nice little uh nice little setup they got going there. Yeah. Honestly, I didn't watch a lot of these. Me neither. But I remember watching the uh Austin one and the uh this Elizabeth one. So the what DVD had it covered his whole O one into early O two. Uh no, all O one. It starts with the WrestleMania seventeen, ends with Unforgiven. And then it had the three stages of hell. And as him versus Steamboat from Bash '94 as extras, I remember that was like a big deal to get that on like DVD or whatever at the time. Uh, here we go, first go again. It's Bell was Tom. It the title? What was that, Ryan? Was that TV title or U.S. title versus Steamboat? U.S. Nice. All right, so you think no, you were using any of this footage from like Beyond the Mat? They are, I think, Wrestling with Shadows. That's what I meant, Wrestling with Shadows, yeah. Yeah, it looks like it, because it said Vincent Brad discussing the match. Oh, interesting. Yeah, this is definitely from Wrestling with Shadows. Was this after he suffered um, like his uh, bike concussion? It, it had to be. I think no, around... The stroke was... Yeah, I don't know. Um... Who we talking about? Uh, yeah. That was when we did stroke. O two, right? Yeah. I want to say around WrestleMania eighteen, actually. I don't know if he had had uh, it here. I feel like they wouldn't have done this. No. Um. So what does he fall on his bike? He goes head uh, over. Yeah. Uh, he over his bike. It definitely is O two. Uh, June twenty fourth, O two. There's Just hours there. before Hart had his stroke. Him and Julie divorced, and then he had the stroke that same day. <laughs> what? Yeah, so Brent and Julie separated in May of 98. After brief reunions for four years, they eventually divorced June 24th, 02, hours before Bret Hart had his stroke. And his stroke wow. comes from an, a bike accident, correct? Yeah, he flips over on his bike and smacks his head. 
because he served the papers in the hospital. Had a stroke after doing his head in a bicycle accident. Calgary report, uh, Herald report a heart hit a pothole, flew over the handlebars, and landed on the back of his head. Developed total paralysis on his left side. Months of physical therapy. Yeah. This is where Bulldog and Owen and Bulldog were right there. They were supposed to go out. And yeah, and they held him back. He's like, oh, they screwed him. <laughs> I, that's one. I, that was my thirteenth birthday gift. Was this pay per view? Wow. Yeah, I mean, I remember being shell shocked, like, because you at this point, like, you'd hear rumors, but you didn't know what to believe. The internet was so Bring wild west. It was like kind of okay. Yeah. yeah, Brett's going on WCW. Like it just it was weird. Like it, you didn't. There were rumors, but you didn't know how substantial they were. Yeah, I remember he submitted. I, it just felt weird, even as a as a teenager. I was not really too keen on what's still, going on. I'm still surprised that Earl Hebner could run that fast and like just get away without anybody asking him anything. I think Nobody it was a shock. Him. Everyone's just in shock. Yeah, yeah. We were, well, shock things. It's his uh, right eye. Right straight. Part of me wants to believe it's a work, but part of me knows it's not. KK's t- teamwork. He is, uh, he's gone into it. It's, if you go back in old editions of Place to Be podcast, he, uh, he talks about it in depth, his thoughts on why it's a work. He's backstage. And I know Nash thinks it's a work too, but you know, Nash is out. Nash is I out like, why work. wouldn't Brett have come clean by now if it was a work? I mean, everything he's been through in his life, like, why would you keep that grift up? He's prideful, though. You know what I mean? He's so prideful. I don't know. I feel like he would have slipped out at some point. Yeah, but like I feel like it's if if it was a work, it's Brett. Everyone's gonna take it to the grave, you know. I don't know why would Sean why keep it, it up? Like why wouldn't Sean say fuck you? Like during that time where him and Brett were still not getting along, why wouldn't he come out and say yeah, fuck? I'm not taking the heat for this shit. Brett was in on it too, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Like look at that saliva that just said like Vince's hair. <laughs> it's a pretty good shot. <laughs> Well, they never guys, show no. the punch, you know? Like, no. that's the one thing you wish you would have saw, like, just the punch. What, to be the fly on the wall in the bathroom where he knocks him out? Yeah. Because you see up to the point in Wrestling with Shadows, like, when he gets out of the shower, and then he kicks the camera guys out. I have that DVD. I remember watching it. Like, oh, it's a great even documentary. Even the pandemic, because I was bored. <laughs> I could watch that documentary a hundred times. I, I probably have watched it a hundred times. It's a great. Yeah, I have to. I think even like Honky Talk Man's in the plane with him uh, going to Montreal. I've pretty much uh, begged the crew on Talking Docs to cover a few. That and um, someone I wish would cover the Andy Kaufman Comedy Central doc, which is awesome too. How long is that? Uh, it may be two hours actually. Ooh. Never mind. Match if they got right to be like, I knew about it too. I knew what I was doing. <laughs> there you go, right there. Shonda said it was, yep, I knew. They said, did you know? Yep. Yeah. And he's like, ooh, ah, yeah. And basically just saying, I did what I was told. Yeah. And this is like fresh <laughs> Vince content about it too, here. Mm. Well, this is like when Sean, like, I mean, obviously Sean found, like, God and was reborn. So he could feel like he had to tell the truth. Like, mm-hmm. get it off yeah. his chest to be mm-hmm. free. So who do you think had the first plan? Like, who was like, let's screw him. Like, who well, the story like, goes, it's Hunter, right? Wasn't it Hunter who said it? I was say, it was Hunter who said it, but then you, t- it was Cornette's idea. And then it was yeah. Rudy's idea. So I think it was, I, I personally think it was Triple H's bringing it to the table and Triple H being the one to be like, yeah, I have all your backs as a wrestler. Right. To kind of be like, yeah, the boys will accept it kind of thing. Yeah, Cornette's never going to let Helmsley take um, um, get like uh, credit for the idea, nor would like, I feel like Cornette would not agree with Helmsley to do business that way, but that's just me. I mean, the crazy thing is like, how soon after that, the biz- business blows up. It's like, that could have really been a death knell. Like if the back, if the guys in the back did, were like, "Screw this, we're out." Like you treat Brett like that, you don't treat anyone like that. Why are we sticking around? 
Vince a piece of shit. WCW's paying money. Like the fact that three months later they blow up is like crazy. So they said that Vince knew, Sean knew, Hunter, Briscoe, and Earl. Um, Bruce Pritchard did not know, and neither did Jim Ross. Wasn't Patterson the agent, or was Briscoe the agent? Um, I think Patterson was the agent. He yeah, knew. Patterson he, had to know. There's no, no way no, Vince and Briscoe were, knew, and Patterson didn't. He's recorded saying, I want to go over the match again. Like, what's the finish on um, Wrestling with Shadows? Yeah, there's no way Pat didn't know. Vince gave him. Well, they're just protecting. They were protecting yeah. him at the time. Yeah, yeah, sure. They, maybe they, they shielded Pat because of the Canada. Yeah. Like, Fellow well, Canadian, I think not they did because I think Bruce. It's either that Bruce knew and Pat didn't, or it's like one of that. Like both of them did not know because I think Pat was like, "Why didn't you tell me?" It's like, "Well, because you have a good relationship with uh, Brett, and I don't want to screw that up." Yeah, then with Pritchard, he's you know he's at the gorilla, and I, I guess he's sitting with the Undertaker, and then him and the Undertaker look at each other. It's like, "Motherfucker, why didn't you tell me? Motherfucker, why didn't you tell me?" They thought right. they both. Yeah. Knew it. So. And then um, you know he's backstage with Davey and Owen. Well, oh, I believe uh, I believe Jr. not knowing too because, like, are you going to tell like there's no reason you can in my mind that you would trust him not to go tell someone. <laughs> like, I, I, oh, wow. it's tough here. enough to here we go. Is Jr. head of the talent relations already? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. When does Hornet is get it? Oh five. No, Cornette was Cornette was like the main booker in 95, 96. Oh no, I meant John, Johnny Laurinaitis gets um 05. Um Yeah, it's around there. Yeah, Ross has it for Ross is like ninety I think he's like ninety seven, ninety-eight. Uh-huh. Yeah, because he's bringing Jam The season two finale. Wow. I got an ad, I'll be right back. Four, three, two, one. Yeah. So Season two finale. This, this squeeze a lot about. into this episode, man. Like, we well, still got nine minutes you... left, and we're on to Lita's neck, broken neck. Yeah, Dark Angel, too. She's doing her own stunts, and uh, one went haywire. So, not all injuries happen on uh, in the ring with pro wrestlers. I can see I'm like two seconds behind. Uh, uh, Building a movie? Here. Is that what you said? Dark yeah, Angel. Was it based off of, I think it was like right after Buffy? Yeah, she was doing a stunt and mm-hmm. broke her neck, basically. Oh, shit. This is definitely on like the, um, I think it it's one of the confidential me. episodes when they do like the injury uh, episodes. That's where you get the whole like, oh, I ruptured a disc that fragmented mm-hmm. my spinal collar. I forgot all you. those All those sound bites were from a confidential episode I learned recently. Watching confidential in your spare time, Rooney? Um, just like YouTube clips of it. As well, I mean, a bunch are on Peacock. Like, it's not a bad little show to like pass out to. Mm, no. Oh man, Mr. Lloyd Youngblood, everyone's favorite surgeon. <laughs> it was either Youngblood who did the necks, and then James Andrews did the legs. And Dr. Cindy <laughs> M. Basil was the PWI psychiatrist. <laughs> Yeah, it's just funny how, like, these outside names that you know. Who's the McDivitt, the guy that uh-huh. retired today or this week or whatever as recording this? Thanks. So that's kind of funny that we know all these names, like Andrews and Youngblood, right. based mm-hmm. off being marked like us. Yeah. Like, I mean, Triple H's quadricep injury made Dr. James Andrews famous. Yeah, I, I always pop when I hear him in, like, real sports. Yeah. So Lita's done for what a year? Two thousand three. She when did she back. come back? Yeah, but when in there it was like uh, yeah, around was... like almost like um June to like uh, June maybe. She's not at nineteen. No, nope, she's, she's not at nineteen. 19. She might have been doing Sunday night heaps. I know she was on color commentary for a while. Oh, so yeah, forever with the coach. It's brutal. Mm-hmm. But I know she's back. Oh, four is a wrestler. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Right. It's I think she's gone for about a year. She's got yep. the same surgery, Austin. I mean, it's like the same thing. She's wearing an Austin 316 uh, tank top. Stone Cold selling tank tops as well. 
I mean, if you had the same, oh, well, they didn't have the same injury. They just had the same surgery. But it's like if you had the same surgery, you're being told that you can't wrestle that long, can you not? Um, well, Lita ends up doing what three years after she retires so, in '06. Yeah. six. I guess it's just because Stone Cold was like more serious then, right? Yeah. Well, wow, she's already with Matt Hardy, so they had a pretty good run. Two thousand and one, they were like really like dating. Well, one to oh five. Where, uh, yeah, somewhere around there. The I mostly got together like during like the Hardy's like initial run with Lita, and you just didn't know about it. Yeah, I think so. I think they started dating like 2001. Nice. I remember when Edge got dropped. I remember like I was there was a message board and the rumors are flying that <laughs> Lita had cheated on it. Matt. What are you doing, Rooney? Sit down. What are we doing? Lita, Lita, had, <laughs> <laughs> Lita had cheated on someone. Had cheated with someone on Matt, and blah blah. blah. And then all of a sudden, I remember I it was some message. I was DVR. I was on or whatever. I remember seeing the message come through. It was Edge. And it was like, whatever, however that leaked out, that was it. It was like, what? It was like mind-blowing that it was him. And then the how whole... close the Hardys and Edge and Christian were tied together, you know? Yeah, so I guess this is where Matt had the broken neck or whatever he had. And then uh, he called. She she asked him if she can travel with Edge because Edge right. is traveling alone. And then Matt hears a voicemail of saying, oh, I miss you. I love you. Can't wait to get back on the mm-hmm. road with you going through her phone randomly, and then he calls the hurricane, and the rest is history. Yeah. I think Matt tore his ACL at that time. Was it Nack ACL? Who knows? Oh. Uh, he was yeah, he's definitely laid up during that time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. They're going in deep on this. But they went deep on Triple H's, mm-hmm. too. I just always thought they went, like, they just took images of, like, a movie or something, and, like, they made it seem like they were, like, just, like, Showing somebody else's next surgery, not the real thing. All right. Well, this is going. You want to do uh, let's do our awards here. What would you rate this as an episode of wrestling TV, just on its own? Yeah. I think it would go like four and yeah. a half, maybe. Six. Man. Five, five um, and a half. I probably would, would go, go, but you can. See, it's like rewindable. Like it's like fast mm. forward. It's a good fast forward show. What do you think, Bruni, out of 10? Um, I give it um I give it a half hour, you know. Well, um, it gives you like good insights on uh, people. Like the airbrush uh segment was good. Um, mm. you know, like a lot of like just like inside, you get to like meet people's like parents and stuff, you know. So it really does give you like a good inside look up behind the scenes, you know. So it's a good step in behind the scenes. So it's good, like it's a five out of ten for me. Yep, it's right down the middle. What about as a pilot? This one, um, okay. Ooh, it's a pilot. Hmm. Are you coming back? I mean, I, I think this is where I'd go like six, six and a half. I think it's good enough that, yeah, if I'm around next Saturday night, I'll throw this on or I'll record it or whatever because they may have a cool yeah. topic. We saw Sean admitted Montreal. It's a big deal. It's topic driven for sure. The next one is Stone Cold. Like, you know, everyone like shared their feelings on what happened, like with the whole Stone Cold walking out thing. So they kick off with really two good episodes. Yeah. Uh, MVP, I guess it's Sean. Yeah. No, I'll go Mean Gene. Mean Gene, yeah, he's good too. Yeah. I go with the airbrush. I would go with the airbrush guys. Yeah, MVP. he was really good. LVP, I'm gonna go Brett. I mean, I mean, I think they kind of dogged him all through this and kind of end up making him. You know, they had everyone but him on, and no one on his side talking. It was everyone. It was Briscoe, Vince, and Sean. You know. I mean, there's no one really to talk about it, though, like on Brett's side. They could have went and got someone. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would probably go on Brett's. So, yeah, Brett's half is like the LVP because they don't really talk about it. But also you can go with the guy who, like, made that Trish segment, like, way too long. <laughs> yeah, I was going to go Trish because it was yeah. – Yeah, but she was good in it. Too much boasting. It took forever. Yeah. Uh, best segment or match, I would – I mean, probably Sean admitting. The second Sean section, I would say. Good. With yeah. Vince, the fresh Vince stuff. Um, yeah. And the most, what's the most O2? Sean's Dutch boy haircut. Uh, oh, man. I want to say like the, um, I want to say the Snickers Cruncher commercial. <laughs> I'm going to say yeah. two things. I'm going to say the Divas and Hedonism or whatever that tape Trish showed. 
Um, and I think what they're going to show Ivory, like so basically the Diva swimsuit stuff, and also DVDs, like the what the what DVD VHS release. Like this is like the big DVD time. They were starting to really do a lot of those. Actually, JT, deep dives you know with exclusives. That was really. You know what it is, Mario? Too. Um, them doing like uh, the week of uh, like television, like where everything is. Yeah. You know, you don't really get that now, like you did back in the day. It was like Monday night, Raw is live, blah blah blah. Tuesday yeah. night, you know. King of the Ring, right there. Boom. Yeah, I mean, you could Last still like, call tickets. Yeah. Last one, Snickers Cruncher. Yeah, this is rough. They're like stretching this out. They got to fill an hour. This is a half hour show. Right. I think they could have made it a half hour. You could have even made Velocity 90 if you want to fill a two-hour block. I mean, they could have done 90, Velocity 30, Confidential. Mm. But whatever. I mean, it's 11.30 on a Saturday. If It's it's like mindless. <laughs> I'm laying on the couch watching Trisha's house. Like, it's kind of whatever. Yeah, no. Half in the bag. Yeah. Just about breast implants? Mouthing off. That might be peak ivory right there. Oh, that is ivory. Wow. So she's giving her thoughts on breast implants. This is quite the ending to the show. <laughs> Where is Pamela Paul shock, Gene? Can you bring her back? I do, I, for our little gimmick here, I kind of miss having a match to kind of keep an eye on. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> no offense, Greg. I'd say this is the worst of the ones we've watched so far. Um, but, uh, again, it wasn't intended to be like a big... No. I mean, like, they want you to watch. They do the Sean thing, but... Mm. You know, this is the first one we have without a big, big match or angle or whatever. I'm just glad I got to be on the show. <laughs> I'm glad we did it because I've actually been yeah. wanting to go back and revisit yeah. this. So I don't regret doing it. I would oh, say well, if we're ranking the first seven we've done, I think it's probably. probably uh, bottom. What can you do? It's more of a talk show behind the scenes. I'm sorry for going to the bathroom, too. <laughs> yeah, keep it in your pants, buddy. Or on YouTube. <laughs> All right. Well, as Ivory talks about uh, fake boobs, let's go ahead and wrap up. Be sure to check out everything we have to offer North South Connection. Uh, subscribe again on YouTube or any uh, podcast application as well. You can follow us across all of social media. We'll be back in a couple weeks, Ryan. Uh, we got three more episodes left of our premieres. If you have suggestions or I, things you want to see, like just leave them in the comments. Uh, we, like I said, we got a few more of these. By the time this airs, I might already have those pegged out. But any ideas for future seasons or ideas? You know, we're we're kind of going through that stuff as well for season two. We're already starting to kind of think about what that could be so be sure to check out everything again north south connection continue being adventurous and we'll talk to you soon take care adventure on